Shri Sai Satcharitra The Wonderful Life and Teachings of Shri Sai Baba Chapter 5 Baba's return with Chan Patil's marriage party welcomed and addressed as Sai contact with other saints his attire and daily routine the story of the padukas wrestling bout with mohdin and change in life turning water into oil the pseudo guru jawahar ali return with chan patil's marriage party as hinted in the last chapter i shall now describe first how sai baba returned to shirdi after his disappearance there lived in the aurangabad district of nizam state in a village called dup a well to do mohammedan gentleman by name chan patil while he was making a trip to aurangabad he lost his mare for two long months he made a diligent search but could get no trace of the lost mare after being disappointed he returned from aurangabad with a saddle on his back after traveling four course and a half he came on the way to a mango tree under the foot of which sat a fakir or a cure fellow he had a cap on his head wore kafni or a long robe and had a satka or a short stick under his arm and he was preparing to smoke a chillum or pipe on seeing chan patil pass by the way he called out to him and asked him to have a smoke and to rest a little the cure fellow of fakir asked him about the saddle chan patil replied that it was of his mare which was lost some time back the fakir asked him to make a search in the nala close by he went and the wonder of wonders he found the mare there he thought that this fakir was not an ordinary man but an avilya a great saint he returned to the fakir with the mare the chillum was ready for being smoked but two things were wanting number 1 fire to light the pipe and number 2 water to wet the chappi or piece of cloth through which smoke is drawn up the fakir took his prong and thrust it forcibly into the ground and out came a live ember which he put on the pipe then he dashed the satka on the ground from where water began to ooze the chappi was wetted with that water then wrung out and wrapped round the pipe thus everything being complete the fakir smoked the chillum and then gave it also to chan patil on seeing all this chan patil was wonderstruck he requested the fakir to come to his home and accept his hospitality next day he went to patil's house and stayed there for some time patil was a village officer of dup his wife's brother's son was to be married and the bride was from shirdi so patil made preparations to start for shirdi for the marriage the fakir also accompanied the marriage party the marriage went off without any hitch the party returned to dup except the fakir who stayed back in shirdi and remained there forever how the fakir got the name sai when the marriage party came to shirdi it alighted at the foot of a banyan tree in bhagat mahal sapati's field near kantoba's temple the carts were loosened in the open courtyard of kantoba's temple and the members of the party descended one by one and the fakir also got down bhagat mahal sapati saw the young fakir getting down and accosted him ya sai or welcome sai others also addressed him as sai and thenceforth he became sai baba contact with other saints sai baba began to stay in a deserted masjid one saint named devidas was living in shirdi for many years before baba came there baba liked his company he stayed with him in the maruti temple in the chavadi and sometimes lived alone then came another saint by name janki das baba spent most of his time in talking with him or janki das went to baba's residence so also 
One Vaishya householder, saint from Puntambe by name Gangagir, always frequented Shirdi. When he first saw Sai Baba carrying pictures of water in both hands for watering the garden, he was amazed and said openly, Blessed is Shirdi that it got this precious jewel. This man is carrying water today, but he is not an ordinary fellow. As this land of Shirdi was fortunate and meritorious, it secured this jewel. So also one famous saint by name Anand Nath of Yavala Math, a disciple of Akal Kot Maharaj, came to Shirdi with some people. When he saw Sai Baba, he said openly, This is a precious diamond in reality. Though he looks like an ordinary man, he is not a gar or an ordinary stone, but a diamond. You will realize this in the near future. Saying this, he returned to Yavala. This was said while Sai Baba was a youngster. Baba's Dress and Daily Routine In his young days, Sai Baba grew hair on his head, never had his head shaved. He dressed like an athlete. When he went to Rahata, about three miles from Shirdi, he brought with him small plants of marigold, jai and juhi and after cleaning he planted and watered them. A devotee by name Vamantatya supplied him daily with two unbaked earthen pitchers. With these Baba himself used to water the plants. He drew water from the well and carried the pitchers on his shoulders. In the evening the pitchers were kept at the foot of the neem tree. As soon as they were placed there, they were broken as they were made of raw earth and not baked. Next day, Tatia supplied two fresh pitchers. This course went on for three years and with Sai Baba's toil and effort, there grew a garden. On this site at present stands the big mansion Samadhi Mandir of Baba which is now frequented and used by so many devotees. The story of Padukas or footprints under the neem tree. A devotee of Akalkot Maharaj by name Bai Krishnaji Ali Bhagkar worshipped the photo of Akalkot Maharaj. He once thought of going to Akalkot in Solapur district take the darshan of the Padukas or footprints of the Maharaj and offer his sincere prayer there. But before he could go there, he got a vision in his dream. Akalkot Maharaj appeared in the vision and said to him, Now Shirdi is my resting place. Go there and offer your worship. So Bhai changed his plan and came to Shirdi, worshipped Baba, stayed there for six months and was happy. As a reminiscence of this vision, etc., he prepared the Padukas and installed them on an auspicious day of Shravan, Shaka, 1834, which is 1912 AD, under the neem tree with due ceremonies and formalities conducted by Dada Kelkar and Upasani. One Dikshit Brahmin was appointed for worship and the management was entrusted to devotee Sagun. Complete version of this story. Mr. B. V. Dev, retired Mamladdar of Thana and a great devotee of Sai Baba, made enquiries about this matter with Sagun Meru Naik and Govind Kam Lakar Dikshit and has published a full version of the Padukas in Sai Leela Volume 2, Number 1, Page 25. It runs as follows. In 1834 Shaka, that is 1912 AD, one doctor, Ram Rao Kotare of Mumbai, came to Shirdi for Baba's Darshan. His compounder and his friend, Bhai Krishnaji Ali Bhagkar, accompanied him. The compounder and Bai became intimate with Sagun Meru Nayak and G.K. Dikshit. While discussing things, 
these persons thought that there must be some memorial of Sai Baba's first advent at Shirdi and sitting under the holy neem tree, they thought of installing Baba's padukas there and were going to make them of some rough stone. Then Bai's friend, the compounder, suggested that if this matter was made known to his master, Dr. Ram Rao Kotare, he would prepare nice padukas for this purpose. All liked this proposal and Dr. Kotare was informed of it. He came to Shirdi and drew a plan of the padukas. He went to Upasani Maharaj in Kantoba's temple and showed him his plan. The latter made many improvements, drew lotus flowers, conch, disc, maize, etc. and suggested that the following shloka of verse regarding neem tree's greatness and Baba's yogic powers be inscribed. The verse was as follows. Sada nimba vrikshasya mula divasat sudastravinam tikta mapyam priyantam tarum kalpa vrikshadikam sadhyayantam namamishwaram sadgurum sainatam Upasani's suggestions were accepted and carried out. The padukas were made in Mumbai and sent to Shirdi with the compounder. Baba said that they should be installed on the Purnima 15th of Shravan. On that day at 11 a.m. G.K. Dikshit brought them on his head from Kantoba's temple to the Dwarakamai or Masjid in a procession. Baba touched the padukas saying that these are the feet of the Lord and asked the people to install them under the foot of the neem tree. A day before one Parsi devotee of Mumbai named Pashta Sheth sent rupees 25 by money order. Baba gave this sum for installation of the padukas. The total expense of installation came to rupees 100 out of which rupees 75 were collected by subscriptions. For the first five years G.K. Dikshit worshipped the Padukas daily and then this was done by Lakshman Kacheshwar Jakhadi. In the first five years Dr. Kotare sent rupees 2 per month for lighting lamp and he also sent the railing round the Padukas. The expense of bringing the railing from the station to Shirdi, rupees seven eight zero, presently rupees seven and fifty pies, and roofing was paid by Sagun Meru Naik. Now Jakhadi or Nana Pujari does the worship, and Sagun Meru Naik offers the Naivedya and lights the evening lamps. Bhai Krishnaji was originally a devotee of Akalkoth Maharaj. He had come to Shirdi at the installation of the Padukas in Shaka 1834 on his way to Akalkoth. He wanted to go to Akalkoth after taking the darshan of Baba. He asked Baba's permission for this. Baba said, Oh, what is there in Akalkoth? Why do you go there? The Maharaj of that place is here, myself. Hearing this, Bhai did not go to Akalkot. He came to Shirdi off and on after the installation of the Padukas. Mr. B. B. Dev concluded that Hemad Panth did not know these details. Had he known them, he would not have failed to depict them in his Satcharita. Wrestling bout with Mohidin Tamboli and change in lifestyle. To return to other stories of Baba, there was a wrestler in Shirdi by name Mohidin Tamboli. Baba and he did not agree on some points and both had a fight. In this Baba was defeated. Thenceforth Baba changed his dress and mode of living. He donned kafni, wore a langot or waistband and covered his head with a piece of cloth. He took a piece of sack cloth for his bed and was content with wearing torn and worn out rags. 
He always said that poverty is better than kingship, far better than lordship. The lord is always brother or befriender of the poor. Ganga Gir was also very fond of wrestling. While he was once wrestling, a similar feeling of dispassion descended over him and at the proper time he heard the voice of an adept saying that he should wear out his body playing with God. So he too gave up sansara and turned towards God realization. He established a mat on the banks of the river near Puntambe and lived there with his disciples. Sai Baba did not mix and speak with the people. He only gave answers when he was questioned. By day he always sat under the neem tree and sometimes under the shade of a babul tree near the stream at the outskirts of the village. In the afternoon he used to walk at random and go at times to Nimgaon. There he frequented the house of Bala Sahib Dengle. Baba loved Mr. Bala Sahib. His youngest brother named Nana Sahib had no son though he married a second wife. Bala Sahib sent Nana Sahib for taking darshan of Sai Baba and after some time with his grace Nana Sahib got a son. From that time onwards people began to come in numbers to see Sai Baba and his fame began to spread and reached Ahmednagar. From thence Nana Sahib and Chandorkar and Keshav Chidambar and many others began to come to Shirdi. Baba was surrounded by his devotees during day and slept at night in an old and dilapidated masjid. Baba's paraphernalia at this time consisted of a chillim, tobacco, a tamril or tin pot, long kafni, a piece of cloth around his head and a satka or short stick which he always kept with him. The piece of white cloth on the head was twisted like matted hair and flowed down from the left ear on the back. This was not washed for weeks. He wore no shoes, no sandals. A piece of sackcloth was his seat for most of the day. He wore a coupin or waist cloth band and for warding off cold he always sat in front of a duni or sacred fire facing south with his left hand resting on the wooden railing. In that duni he offered an oblation of egoism, desires and always uttered Allah Malik or God is the sole owner. The masjid in which he sat was only of two room dimensions where all devotees came and saw him. After 1912 there was a change. The old masjid was repaired and a pavement was constructed. Before Baba came to live in this masjid, he lived for a long time in a place Takia where with gungru or small bells tied on his ankles, Baba danced beautifully and sang with tender love. Turning water into oil. Sai Baba was very fond of lights. He used to borrow oil from shopkeepers and keep lamps burning the whole night in the masjid and temple. This went on for some time. The Baniyas, who supplied oil gratis, once met together and decided not to give him oil. When, as usual, Baba went to ask for oil, they all gave him a distinct no. Unperturbed, Baba returned to the masjid and kept the dry wicks in the lamps. The Baniyas were watching him with curiosity. Baba took the tamril or tin pot which contained very little, a few drops of oil, put water into it and drank it and then forced it fall into the container. After consecrating the tin pot in this way, he again took the water from the tin pot and filled all the lamps with it and lighted them. To the surprise and dismay of the watching Baniyas, 
The lamps began to burn and kept burning the whole night. The Baniyas repented and apologized and Baba forgave them and asked them to be more truthful in future. The Pseudo Guru Jawahar Ali Five years after the wrestling bout, the above mentioned, one fakir from Ahmed Nagar by name Jawahar Ali came to Rahata with his disciples and stayed in Bakhal, auspicious room near Veerabhadra temple. The fakir was learned, could repeat the whole Quran and had a sweet tongue. Many religious and devout people of the village came to him and began to respect him. With the help of the people, he started to build an idga or a walled enclosure in which Mohammedans pray on Eid day near the Veerabhadra temple. There was some quarrel about this affair on account of which Jawahar Ali had to leave Rahata. Then he came to Shirdi and lived in the masjid with Baba. People were captured by his sweet talk and he began to call Baba his disciple. Baba did not object and consented to be his chela. Then both Guru and Chela decided to return to Rahata and live there. The Guru or the teacher never knew his disciple's worth, but the disciple knew the shortcomings of the Guru. Still, he never disrespected him, observing carefully his duties. He even served the master in various ways. They used to come to Shirdi off and on, but their mainstay was in Rahata. The loving devotees of Baba in Shirdi did not like that Baba should stay away from them in Rahata. So they went in a deputation to bring Baba back to Shirdi. When they met Baba near the Idga and told them the purpose for which they came, Baba said to them that the Fakir was an angry, ill-tempered fellow. He would not leave them and that they should better go back to Shirdi without him before the fakir returned. While they were thus talking, the fakir turned up and was very angry with them for trying to take away his disciple. There was some hot discussion and altercation and it was finally decided that both the Guru and Chela should return to Shirdi. And so they returned and lived in Shirdi. But after a few days, the Guru was tested by Devi Das and he was found wanting. Twelve years before Baba arrived in Shirdi with the marriage party, this Devi Das, aged about ten or eleven years, came to Shirdi and lived in the Maruti temple. Devi Das had fine features and brilliant eyes and he was dispassion incarnate and a dhyani. Many persons, namely, Tatya Kote, Kashinath and others regarded him as their Guru. They brought Jawahar Ali in his presence and in the discussion that followed, Jawahar was worsted and fled from Shirdi. He went and stayed in Bijapur and returned after many years to Shirdi and prostrated himself before Sai Baba. The delusion that he was Guru and Sai Baba his Chela was cleared away and as he repented, Sai Baba treated him with respect. In this case, Sai Baba showed by his conduct how one should get rid of egoism and do the duties of a disciple to attain the highest end, namely self-realization. This story is told here according to the version given by Mahalsapati, a great devotee of Baba. In the next chapter will be described Ram Naomi festival, the masjid, its former condition and later improvement in it etc. Bow to Sri Sai. Peace be to all.